Treasure Island is an 1883 novel by author Robert Louis Stevenson about a young cabin boy named Jim Hawkins and a ruthless pirate, Long John Silver, and their search for lost pirate treasure. For some reason, I have seen every major film adaptation of this story, so I thought, let's compare them. Treasure Island was first adapted for film in 1918. This was somewhat of a novelty movie with all of the characters being played by children. It was more properly adapted in 1920, starring Lon Chaney. Sadly, this film is lost. In 1934, we got the first sound version of Treasure Island, starring Jackie Cooper and Wallace Beery. The film was originally going to be in color, but MGM did not want the extra expense, much to director Victor Fleming's dismay. The first color version came in 1950, starring Bobby Driscoll and Robert Newton, produced by Walt Disney. In 1990, there was what was meant to be a sort of modern update, more action movie-esque version, and then in 1996 came the Muppets version, Muppets Treasure Island. There was also a 2012 TV movie, but like, nobody saw it. There's lots of versions, literally nobody saw, so I'm just sticking to the major ones. Let's start by comparing some of the major scenes. We'll start with the scene where Blind Pew delivers the black spot to Jim and Billy Bones. In some versions, Billy Bones is friends with Jim, such as the 1950 version. In others, like the 34 version, Jim dislikes him. Either way, he is given the black spot a warning he is going to be killed. The 34 version and the 1950 version are pretty equal in terms of performance and execution. The 34 version is more drawn out and talky, whereas the 1950 version is snappier and much shorter. But they both work. In the 1950 version, Jim actually struggles against Blind Pew and seems legitimately subdued, whereas the 34 version of Jim is both physically and mentally weaker than any of the other portrayals, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. In terms of the actual spot itself, I really like the 1950 version. It's more like a blot. I like the way the ink runs and smears on the paper. The 1990 version is really dull and pretty forgettable. None of the performances are particularly memorable, aside from Jim because of that weird voice his actor puts on. I also don't like that the black spot is like a cutout, like, what pirate is taking the time to cut out little circles like that? The Muppet version, I have to admit, is kind of the version that's always in the back of my mind when I watch this scene in any of them. But re-watching it, I'm disappointed to say it's kind of cringe. Blind P was a Muppet in this, obviously. And, you know, he fumbles around and bumps into things. He mistakes Jim for a girl. It's really not as funny as I remember it being when I was a kid. And Jim's hair is just awful. But near the beginning, there's this scene with Billy Bones. It's pretty funny, and it's also a reference to the absolutely insane scene in the 34 version, where it makes everyone in the pub sing. A bottle of rum, bottle of rum, bottle of rum, you head! Another key scene would have to be where Jim kills Mr. Hands. They have reached the island at this point, and the pirates who snuck aboard mutiny, splitting the crew into basically good guys and bad guys. The good guys are in an old fort, and Jim sneaks back to unanchor the ship, where he meets Mr. Hands, one of the pirates. Hands feigns an injury and agrees to teach Jim how to steer the boat over to the other side of the island in exchange for help. Instead, though, he tries to kill Jim while his guard is down, and Jim shoots him in self-defense. One more step, Mr. Hands, and I'll blow your brains out. One more step, Mr. Hands, and I'll blow your brains out. One more step, Mr. Hands, and I'll blow your brains out. The 34 version is okay, but Jackie Cooper's gym is so pathetic and weak, he doesn't feel like he should even be in this scene at all. He kills a man, and it comes across like he just kicked his shin for trying to steal his candy or something. Gee, mister, that serves you right. It's clearly not Cooper's fault. He's played a wide variety of characters, including all kinds of street kids, hoodlums, gang members, in movies like Boy of the Streets, The Bowery, The Devil is a Sissy. No, it's clearly the direction he was given. It's like he's still playing Skippy. Actually, Skippy might have been a little tougher. It just makes for a very strange scene, because it doesn't even feel like it should be happening. And Jim sure doesn't act like it did. 
The 1950 version is probably the best version of this scene. Bobby Driscoll's version of Jim is a lot tougher and a lot smarter, but not to the point where he doesn't seem like a kid anymore. It's shot similarly to the 34 version, but it's more fast paced and exciting. Plus Jim actually gets stabbed in this version. The 90s version is fine. There's more blood and music that sounds like it's from a video game. <laughs> Mr. Hands is like a Saturday morning cartoon villain in this version. He's ridiculous. You can keep your powder dry. Hey. Nay, then you I also just straight up don't like Christian Bale's performance at all. He seems incredibly out of place in this time period. It seems like he was just poofed from the 90s to the 1800s rather than someone who actually lives and grew up in that time period. He actually kind of reminds me of the kid from the 90s Lassie movie. And hey, maybe I'm being a little harsh. I am essentially comparing a blockbuster movie actor with two of history's most talented child actors of all time. Like, no duh, he can't compare to Jackie Cooper and Bobby Driscoll. They're Jackie Cooper and Bobby Driscoll. Like, yeah, kid, you don't exactly hold a candle to the youngest best actor nominee in the history of the Academy. Not really a fair comparison, but hey, that's the name of the game. Also, Hans screams as he falls in this version, which is just kind of silly. Besides, I always figured this shot just killed him instantly. The Muppets version, of course, does not include this scene. I guess a little kid shooting someone was just too much for the Muppets. Finally, I want to look at the treasure scene. It's called Treasure Island, after all. The treasure is kind of important. I mean, you're thinking pirate treasure, what are you thinking? You're thinking big chests, doubloons, and gems with the warm glow of the gold. First, we got the 34 version. I mean, it's great. It is perfect. You've got the treasure all piled up in the cave set, chests and pearls and stacks of gold bars, a huge pile of coins, a nice close-up of Jim running the treasure through his fingers. Absolutely perfect treasure scene. Next is the 1950 version. It is in color and we have a nice close-up of Jim running the treasure through his fingers. It's fine. The 1990 version is pretty decent. Nice cave full of treasure. Again, nice shot of Jim running the coins through his hand. But why is the 1950 version the only one that does an actual close-up on his face? Well, it's good, like I said. Not bringing anything new to the table, basically just the same as the 34 version, but the color really helps the effect. The Muppet version is by far the best. You've got an entire room full of treasure, all gold and glowy and in beautiful color. I like it. Now, let's do some of the character comparisons. Let's start with our main protagonist, Jim Hawkins. He's the 14-year-old cabin boy who originally found the treasure map. The 90s version is very 90s. Not seem like he's of the time period at all, but other than that, he's fine, I guess. The Muppets version is slightly better, although he kind of reminds me of Charlie Bucket from Willy Wonka for some reason. I don't know, maybe because he sings a song. He's definitely a lot more innocent than the 1990 version, and of course, as mentioned, he doesn't kill anyone in this one. The 34 version, though, manages to be even more innocent, and he does kill someone. He's notably much younger than any of the other versions of Jim, and he is much physically weaker than in the book or any of the other movies. He's also a lot more naive. I would go so far as to say this version of Jim is actually pretty dumb, but it kind of works for this movie. Now, part of that is, of course, because he's played by Jackie Cooper, who was a huge star at the time and already had a very established persona. The wide-eyed and perfect ray of sunshine child who melts the cold heart of the drunken tramp type character. That would also be why this Jim cries so much. He actually didn't cry at all originally, but MGM forced director Victor Fleming to go back and shoot some crying scenes they could insert into the film. A Jackie Cooper film where he doesn't cry was valueless to them. They didn't call him buckets of tears for nothing. In my opinion, the best version of Jim on film is Bobby Driscoll's version. He fits the period and he's a good balance of naive and capable. He's still a kid, of course, and new to everything he experiences, but he gives everything his all and sometimes he succeeds. I did notice though that all of these Jims have hairstyles that are only vaguely old timey, fitting better with the periods the films were actually made. Aside from Jackie Cooper, who has a notably 
uncool do for the 1930s, but it fits the rest of the hair and costumes a lot more than any of the others. Probably the most important character to get right, honestly, Long John Silver. He is the scoundrel pirate who tricks Jim into thinking they're friends and then betrays him. The 1934 version gives us Wallace Beery as Silver. He was a popular character actor who successfully transitioned from silent to talkies, and he previously starred alongside Jackie Cooper in The Champ, for which he won Best Actor at the Academy Awards. I really like this version of Silver. He has a warmth and a friendliness to him that makes Jim falling for his ruse and becoming friends with him very believable. Beery always had a talent for projecting this kind of warmth and kindness to his performances, which is incredible because in real life that couldn't be further from who he actually was. But with his established screen persona as the kindly old drunk, it made perfect sense to cast him in this role. In the 1950 version, we have Robert Newton. His performance in this film actually invented what we now think of as pirate talk or the pirate accent. You ain't given to rum drinking, are you? Oh, no, sir. No quarrelsome, like some I could name. So for that reason, his performance may seem more piratey than Wallace Beery's in hindsight. Newton certainly seems like a dirty, scoundrel, backstabbing pirate, but I always felt like he never really had that much chemistry with Bobby Driscoll, and so it never really feels like they're truly friends at any point in the film. Tim Curry is... Tim Curry. He's a good Long John Silver, like Wallace Beery, a bit of an obvious choice for the role in 1996, but hey, he's right for the part, what can you say? He's more overtly a bad guy, which makes sense this movie is for a much younger audience than the others. His intentions are made clearer early on. Then we have the 1990 version. Silver is played by Charlton Heston, of all people. He doesn't bring that Charlton Heston style, though. Actually, he seems to be channeling Wallace Beery. Overall, he's a really forgettable bad Silver. The other actors are all about equal, but he is just leagues below them. Of course, every performance in this movie is bad, so it's probably more to blame on direction. Ben Gunn is a character Jim meets when he actually gets to the island, a former crewman of the pirates who has been stranded for years and gone crazy. He is the person who actually has the treasure they're looking for. In the 1934 version, he's played by character actor Chick Sale, who previously appeared with Jackie Cooper in When a Feller Needs a Friend. He is absolutely perfect in the role. He brings the perfect level of energy and eccentricism to the part. He is always the go-to Ben Gunn in my mind. The 1950 version is not great. He's got the look down, but the actor just doesn't seem into it. It's a pretty lame attempt. I mean, he tries to be wacky, I suppose, but it's very restrained, which I don't think works at all for this character. The 1990 version is pretty similar to Cheek Sales portrayal, same energy, not quite as goofy, but everything in this version is realismed up. It's a pretty decent update of the character. The Muppet version gives us Benjamina Gunn, who is Miss Piggy. Not played by Miss Piggy, but just literally Miss Piggy. <laughs> she does not resemble the original character in any way, aside from being stranded. Now, I get it. It's a Muppet movie. You gotta fit Miss Piggy in there somehow. I mean, what else could they do? Make her Jim's mom? No, that'd be a waste of Miss Piggy. And with a cast full of wacky Muppets, you don't really need a Ben Gunn anyways. But bearing that in mind, I can't really compare her to the others here. She just simply isn't a version of the character. She's Miss Piggy. The thing about Treasure Island is that a lot of the story is old, boring men in powdered wigs talking about boring crap. Muppets Treasure Island avoids this by making all the boring powdered wig guys Muppets, who are notably not boring. So that definitely earns the Muppet version a few more points. The book ends with Silver stealing a bag of gold and fleeing during the ship's first port. In the 1950 version, Silver simply sails off straight from the island in a lifeboat. Doesn't really seem like he'll make it that far, but Jim and Livesey seem to think otherwise. I guess they didn't want to drag out the ending because it's very rushed. In the Muppet version, Silver tries to escape in a lifeboat off the ship, but the weight of the treasure just causes him to sink, which is pretty funny. The 1934 version is the most different. Silver is actually locked up, which yeah, you think the other versions would have thought of that. 
Anyway, Silver is able to, again, emotionally manipulate Jim and convinces him to let him out, give him a bag of gold, and let him escape in a lifeboat. And if they didn't get that noose just right, right there, why, I'd probably just uh, slowly strangle and choke and, uh, just so I didn't swallow my tongue. But that very rarely happens, Jim, swallowing the tongue. Stop! Oh. Stop! Silver does give Jim his parrot, though. Truly, Jackie Cooper Jim learned nothing from this experience. Certainly will. The 1990 version seems to be a direct reference to the 34 ending. Again, Silver tries nearly the exact same speech word for word on Jim, but this time Jim's like, yeah, I'm not falling for that one. Kicking and screaming, strangling slow. Take hours to die. Not a pretty sight at all. I wouldn't think so. But maybe you should have thought of that before you turned to piracy. Silver also subdues Ben Gunn to get away straight out of the 34 version. So let's rank these suckers. The best version as a film is the 1934 version. It's the most cohesive, they cut out most of the boring long conversations, it's well structured, a solid story starring some of the finest actors in the history of film. Second is the Muppets version. Like I said, not all the jokes hold up, but hold a gun to my head and force me to watch one of these films 50 times in a row and it'll be this one. Again, it's a bit of a parody at some points, but it is mostly a retelling of the story, just like a comedy version. It's also a musical, and while Shiver My Timbers and Cabin Fever are both solid tunes, the others are pretty forgettable. Third goes to the 1950 version. If you want a straight up adaptation of the book, this is the one for you. Robert Newton and Bobby Driscoll are perfect for the lead characters, and it sticks pretty close to the book's plot. Some parts do drag a little, but if you actually enjoy pirate stories, which I do not, you may be more forgiving. Last and certainly least is the 1990 version. It's boring, it's lame, it's extremely 90s. It has the absolute worst of the Long John Silvers we've looked at. And of course, considering the other three exist, why would you ever choose to watch it over three vastly superior films? Like I said, there are many versions of this story in film. There was one in the 70s, there was a 1999 version, because you really need three Treasure Islands in the 90s. And Treasure Planet came out in 2002, only three years after the 99 version. There's an anime, there's the unofficial sequel to the 1950 version. There's TV movies and miniseries. I mean, Jesus, you think that's enough? But you know, it's a public domain story, so naturally it's going to be retold a lot. I just thought I'd do a little comparison, since I did have to watch two of them for my Child Stars video. I had already seen Muppets Treasure Island, like I think everyone has. I just didn't realize how many films existed, though, and at this point, if I ever have to watch a Treasure Island adaptation again, I think I'll completely lose my mind. <laughs> now, thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked it, please do subscribe. Check out my Child Stars video if you have not seen that one, and I'll see you next time.